one of the biggest messages that God has called me to preach to the body of Christ is the importance, the the necessity of being humble. Being humble is the biggest, one of the biggest keys that unlocks miracles, healing, freedom, and that unlocks the, the, um, the anointing that unlocks being able to walk in your purpose, the revelation and the direction of what your purpose is and how to walk in it. Being humble is one of the biggest keys of how to please God. It's one of the biggest keys of how to hear God's voice. It's one of the biggest keys of how to be the most spiritual. Well, number one, it's the one of the biggest things, messages that, that God has called me to preach. And it's what one of the, probably one of, definitely one of the most things I am passionate to preach about. It's one of those things that it's right there in the word. It's right there in the word again and again and again. But the enemy has blinded people, blinded many in the body of Christ to overlook it or to not really see how powerful it is. Humility is one of those things where it, it seems just so simple and common and, um, I don't know, not glamorous or something, like not juicy or <laughs> um, extraordinary. I don't know. You know, so many people, they want to learn all like the mysteries of the kingdom and these fancy things. <laughs> so like being so focused on that, being so focused on the things that seem all exciting or whatever can cause people to overlook the very simple but most important aspects of being a believer and unlocking the keys of the kingdom, the blessings from God. Um, <laughs> it's like, you know, I was in church my whole life and I honestly like don't really remember too many messages about humility. And, um, as I have, as I have, um, been in ministry now for more than seven years, um, God has really opened my eyes more and more to see how much this key, this key of humility has been missing in the body. Like it's just been overlooked it hasn't been seen as valuable. Um, yeah, I just, you can see my passion pre speaking about it because um, it's one of, I mean, I just get so excited to share secrets, secrets of the anointing, secrets of how to receive the miracles. Um, and this is seriously one of the biggest ones, one of the biggest ones in the Bible the Bible talks about how God lifts the humble. God lifts the humble to, to go higher in the spiritual realm, to, to go into the heavenlies with Jesus and see and understand the things of the kingdom that the people in the world don't understand, don't see. Humility, when you are humble, God lifts you to... To, to contain more, to receive and contain more of his presence, his glory, his power. He lifts you to shine bright for his glory. He lifts you high in the sky like a bright star. He, he lifts you to receive miracles and abundant life, which in turn makes you to shine the brightest because you're, you're carrying heaven. You're, sh you're shining, reflecting and shining heaven on this earth. <laughs> you are 
God lifts you to to reflect his heart, his image. Only when you're humble, God lifts you to put more of his power in you, to walk in his power. God lifts you in places of leadership so you can lead and help others. All of this lifting, it only comes with being humble. When the Bible talks about lifting, being elevated, first of all, that's always only supposed to be for God's glory. Um, but whenever it's talking about being lifted, being elevated, it's humility is the only way. Whenever you see it saying, God, I will lift you, it's when a person is humble only, not when a person is extremely gifted, not when a person has all sorts of confidence and swagger and charisma and a resume and the connections and is liked by a lot of people. No, only when one is humble, that's when God supernaturally lifts a person. All over the word, it speaks about, like so many times in the word, it speaks about how we must be like a child to enter the kingdom, to receive the blessings of the kingdom. We have to become like a child. Jesus even shows an example at one time, you child, come here, look everyone, you have to be like this. I love that example because to me, the revelation God gave me is like, you guys aren't getting it. Like, you gotta be like this. <laughs> like, you you guys need to understand what pride is and what humility is. Look at this child. And so um, that's a big aspect of what humility is, is being teachable. A child is teachable. A child doesn't really have it in them that they want to be a know-it-all. It's just simple. It's like, yeah, I'm a child. I'm a kid. They, they don't argue when an adult says, you're a kid. They don't say, no, I'm an adult. <laughs> you know, they know their place. They know they're a kid and it's not in them. That impurity is not in them to lift themselves higher than what they really are. They live in that truth of what they really are. Um, and so uh, children, when they go to school, they don't try to argue with the teacher. That's not even in them. They're there to learn. They know the teacher knows way more than they do. And they simply are able to learn. They're able to intake everything because they're staying in their place as a child as a t disciple a student rather than questioning the teacher rather than comparing their knowledge with the teacher's knowledge when a person does that that's them being full so we must be childlike in that way a student we must be empty so that the teacher can fill our cup. The teacher can't put anything in our cup if our cup is full. All right, so what is pride? I'm, I'm speaking on humility. So humility is the opposite of pride. So pride, a big thing of number one of pride is a know-it-all, is um, not being teachable. Um, that's a big aspect of pride. And when it comes to the kingdom of God, that's a, you, you can't grow spiritually if you're prideful. There's so much of the kingdom we don't know yet. So we should never come to the place of not being teachable, having our cup full. The difference between us and God is massive. So even when we are servants of God and we are old in age, there's still a massive difference between us and God in terms of um, our minds and our knowledge of the, the spiritual realm and the kingdom of God and God himself, our knowledge of God himself, you know, in all of his ways. We should always see ourselves rightly, see ourselves as a child we are to be lifelong children, li lifelong childlike disciples is what we are called to be. 
Um, so that's a big aspect of what pride is, is when you're not teachable. And this is, this is a serious problem in the new wine. In the new wine, the disciples ran into this problem. The disciples are the Pharisees. Jesus did not choose the Pharisees as his original disciples because they were not teachable, because their cups were full, because they were so smart and professional in the things of God and the knowledge of the things of God. And Jesus was coming to teach them so many new things, and they didn't have room for any of it. And so when Jesus was teaching new things, instead of them being like teachable, like, wow, I've never seen fruits like this before. This truly must be one sent by God. This is exciting. This is a gift. Let me open up my ears and listen and learn some things. Instead of them being that way, they were completely full. And when Jesus would teach things, when Jesus would operate in a new way as he ministered, as he prayed for people, as he prayed for people on the Sabbath, for example, they weren't willing to learn. They were immediately taking their knowledge and putting it against, comparing it with Jesus's new wine, way of doing things, way of ministering, his revelations. They're just like comparing it and saying, I know best, you don't. I'm the professional. So <laughs> they were literally pu putting themselves above Jesus. And I mean, you know, I mean, Jesus was a child growing up in the synagogue with with priests. Yeah. So it takes a humbling, but they were just putting themselves above Jesus. They weren't even putting themselves on the same level. They were putting themselves above. And so Jesus cannot teach them anything when they will not humble themselves to be under Jesus, to be teachable. Um, so in this new wine that in this revival, the new wine that God is releasing Every person in the body of Christ needs to be teachable like never before, needs to empty their cup, needs to do the opposite of what the Pharisees did, needs to humble themselves. If I am not seeing the fruits in my life, in my ministry, like Jesus had in the Gospels, like Peter, Paul, and the disciples did in the Acts Church, then that means I need to be like a kindergartner. I have a lot to learn. God is releasing a grace right now. He's raised up servants to release this new wine. Here I am attending class, humbling myself to come under so that the servants of God, God has risen up to release this new wine so that they can fill my cup, so that I can actually grow. And that's what a lot of people have a hard time doing. And they just can't learn. You just can't grow. If you, if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to have your eyes opened up spiritually and hear God's voice more and access the anointing, you have to become like a child. There's no other way. It can't work any other way. You'll be confused. You'll be like, this doesn't make sense. Like you, you'll listen to teachings, but because your cup's full, nothing can enter. And so you'll throw it out. You'll just be confused. Um, you, 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 many people end up rejecting it like the Pharisees did. It, it's, it's a principle. You have to empty your cup. You have to become like a child to actually be able to receive the new wine, to, to actually be able to understand, grab the spiritual knowledge, and grow in it. So number one, being prideful is, um, or being prideful is to have your cup full and not be teachable. And thank you, no better think you know best everyone coming in this this into this new wine you need to lay everything down you need to lay everything down all the knowledge you've accumulated 
Just lay it down and let God teach you, reveal to you old wine doctrines, old wine ways, things that you learned that were actually old wine. For decades you learned, you thought was right, but it, let him reveal to you, this is actually old wine. I want more for you. I want better for you. I want pure new wine for you. Lay it down for me so I can give you the new wine, the real thing. Amen. And then another aspect of being pride, of what pride is, is thinking that you are very important and wanting people to see you as important, as gifted, talented, anointed, so spiritual, successful, um, and just like seeing yourself as more important than others and constantly wanting more, constantly wanting validation, constantly wanting people to be impressed with you and look at you, how great you are and how successful you are, how anointed you are. Um, and when you have pride in your heart like that, you're actually taking glory away from God. So you can be saying glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Um, but if in your heart you're wanting people to see how spiritual you are, you are wanting people to to be amazed at your anointing, your giftings. You are wanting people to follow you. You're wanting people to admire you. You are wanting people to applause you. You're wanting people to talk about you. Look how amazing this person is. You're wanting to bring people under your wing because it puffs you up. You can be saying glory to God all day and night, but you are actually taking glory from God. If that's your heart and that's, and you're operating in that. So you can have those feelings. The devil can bring pride feelings, but you can reject them. So remember, you know, your thoughts and your feelings are not your own. What, what comes as truth, what's counted as truth by God and in the spiritual realm is your actions which include your words. So we are in a spiritual war. The devil lies to all of us. He tries to, I mean, he speaks lies to everybody. And the main way he's speaking lies to everybody is in the thoughts and in the emotions. His strategy is to try to get you to think that the thought and feeling you're having is the truth, is you, is God speaking. And so... If he can trick you to thinking that that's God speaking, you speaking, you, yourself, the truth, then you will speak it, then you will act on it. The moment you speak on it and act on it, that's the moment you give authority to the devil. That's the moment that the enemy is given permission in the spiritual realm to have his way. So, for example, when it comes to pride, you... You, the devil can send thoughts and feelings of pride. He can send those feelings and thoughts and it feels like yourself. But what you should be doing is taking authority over your thoughts and your feelings. The Bible says, take every thought captive. Take every thought captive. Capture these thoughts and make them obedient to Christ, meaning the devil is not allowed to bring a thought and feeling that contradicts God's word and God's will and truth for my life. If he sends one of those thoughts in here, it gets arrested. You're not allowed to do that. It's against the law in my life as a child of God. My life here as a child of God, it's breaking the law to have this thought, to send this thought here, devil. This thought must be taken prisoner. That just like there's laws of the land, there's laws in this city that I'm living in in LA, there's laws in this nation. If a person is um, going above the speed limit, that's breaking the law. So guess what? They can't just be allowed to continue to drive over the speed limit. The police have the authority to capture them, to stop them from doing this. That's how, that's how it is in the spiritual realm. So a big action of humbling yourself, when the Bible says humble yourself, 
the big action of humbling yourself is making the decision, I don't want any pride in me. I want to be purely humble, and I want God to have all the glory in my life. So you, you reject every thought, feeling of pride, even if it is 50 thoughts of pride in one day, you go in the spirit and you take action. You act as a police officer (laughs) all day. You mean serious business. I will not be prideful. I will not take glory from God. No way, devil. So you reject, 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 reject every little thought and feeling with your mouth. I reject this feeling of pride. I reject that feeling that I want people to look at me and applause me. I reject that that temptation I have now to post something to make me look really important. That's really the reason why I wanted to post this to make me look amazing. I reject that feeling and I will not post that in Jesus name. I declare I am humble. I declare I am not prideful. I declare that I want God to have all the glory. And I declare that I will give God all of the glory. I will never steal any glory. And I will never draw anybody to myself. I will draw everyone to God. Declare that. If you're struggling with prideful thoughts, declare this. Declare this. Declare this. Speak this over and over and over again. It's powerful. The Bible says submit to God, which means to submit to his word and his truth and his will. Make yourselves committed to his word and his will. And then it says in the Bible, resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. This is a principle in the spiritual realm. This is a law in the spiritual realm. So when you are rejecting all day, when you are declaring the truth, this is the action of resisting the devil and submitting to God, submitting to God, resisting the devil. And then, so guess what? The devil has to flee. If you can be diligent about this, if you can take it seriously, this obedience to God in humbling yourself, the devil will flee. He has to. It's a law in the spiritual realm. If you really want to get that pride out of you, if you really want to be humble, then you got to take action. You got to be serious in your actions. Don't be lazy. Take it seriously. If you're saying this is a serious problem, I mean, a temptation in your heart, dirtiness in your heart that you've allowed to stay, you've allowed the devil to to reign in this area, you've maybe for a long time, you got to get serious because you got to understand how the devil knows about humility. You know how I was sharing in the beginning, it's the greatest superpower, the greatest key, the, the greatest key to everything in the kingdom, to protection, to safety in the spiritual realm, to all of God's blessings, to being lifted for his glory, to fulfill your purpose, to receive all the miracles. The key is humility. The devil knows this. It's all over the word. It's all over the word. David, why he was why was he anointed? Because he was after God's heart. That means he he was only about what God wanted. He didn't have all this personal selfish ambition junk. That's why God anointed him. So the devil sees when 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 he he, he knows this principle. He knows the more humble people that are out there, the more people who are truly after God's heart the more people will be anointed, the more people will be serving God powerfully, the more his kingdom goes down. The devil knows this. So of course he's going to try with all his might to try to keep people from being humble. So you got to stop letting him play around in your heart, in your mind, dictating your life. You need to take action in the spiritual realm. If you want to be serious about pleasing God, being in his will, fulfilling your purpose, receiving his inheritance of abundant life. Amen. Hallelujah. So those are the big aspects of pride is um, really thinking about yourself wrongly because none of us should think ourselves as important as, I mean, we, we know it. We need to see our words through Christ. 
we are worthy, but only through Christ. You know, we need to see ourselves rightly. Like, we need to have godly confidence. I am a child of God, and I can do all that God has called me to do. And I am equipped, and I have everything that God's called me to do. And I, he's with me, and I hear his voice, and he's leading me. Like, we need to have that godly confidence, but it needs to be rooted in humility. That's the difference. It needs to be rooted in humility. It needs to be rooted in the knowledge of everything that I have, breath in my lungs, arms, eyes, nose, mouth, brain, tongue, <laughs> neck, legs, feet, every part of this body inside and out is 100% the credit going to God. <laughs> I did not have even 0.001% um, any, I didn't have anything to do with, with, with my body, with my personality, with my mind, with, <laughs> with my face, nothing. It was all God, right? So it's actually so foolish to be thinking highly of oneself and thinking someone, thinking yourself is so great, so talented, so important, um, so smart, <laughs> God, it's all God. It's not you at all. It's 100% God that's giving you the ability to do all these things. Um, even your heart, even your heart, if God chooses to lift you for his glory, it's only by God's grace that he gave you a heart. Maybe that he nurtured you with humble, humble upbringings, humble parents, humble spiritual parent, mentor, and that helped you to be molded, to have a pure heart, you know, even having a pure, obedient heart, we shouldn't take credit for. It's only by God's grace. Amen. So um, being prideful is being foolish in that you're taking credit where you didn't do anything. You didn't do it. It was, it was God. <laughs> yes, we must obey. But really we can't do anything without god and um even our obedience we do have a free will we do have choice to obey and to work hard you know to work hard and do things like yes we play a part yes but even so even so god's part in that is so much more it's more like 99.9% god and then obedience is like 0.001%. <laughs> it's still important. It's still needed. The hard work. But I just mean like in our hearts, we should see it that way. We should see it that way. We should see it that way. Yes. Yes. You know, pat yourself on the back for doing a good job for working hard, you know. Okay. <laughs> but really make sure you're renewing your mind that it's all God. It's all God. Amen. So um, I want to just share practically, um, practically areas of pride in the, in the church. So I, I just shared generally what pride is versus what humility is. But now I want to share practically, like practical examples. So you need to be teachable. You need to be a disciple. You need to lay everything down. So when you, are, when you are planting yourself where God's calling you to be planted, when you you commit to being a disciple and a spiritual son or daughter of your leader, of your spiritual father or mother, you need to see yourself rightly. No matter your age, especially in this new wine, no matter your age, no matter how many decades you've been a believer or taught in Bible school and everything, you need to picture yourself as a kindergartner going to your desk, sitting at the desk, and just listening and receiving and learning from the teacher. And you need to really keep focused on what you have received and what you are learning. You need to really separate your past, which has a lot of old wine, from the new 
and just stay focused on the new and not be mixing. You can have a certain certain ways of, like hearing God's voice, this is a good example. You can, maybe you've walked with God for a long time and you've learned, you've had your way of learning here to how to hear his voice. You, you need to lay that down. I mean, you need to surrender the knowledge because maybe there's some things that have old wine in it. Maybe there's some things that aren't quite all the way right. You know, maybe there's some ways that you've learned of hearing from God that actually is an open door for the angel of light. The devil masquerading himself as an angel of light to speak to you. That's why it's so important to lay it all down. And so what does lay it down like really look like? So here, let me give you an example. Like I have taught, when we're talking about hearing God's voice, I have taught many teachings. They are on my YouTube channel on hearing God's voice, relationship with God. Um, I made a play, there's a playlist on my YouTube that I just started um, this week. One's called Relationship with God, I believe is what it's called. And also I just added a new playlist, Practical Wisdom, uh, which has a bunch of different practical questions. Many of them I've taught on the subscriber Q&As answering your practical questions, your day-to-day practical questions. So check those out. Um, And so on this playlist, like, for example, I have a lot of teachings how to hear God's voice. So to lay it down, your your past knowledge of like hearing God's voice, it means to really be really pay attention what is being taught by my teacher, by my spiritual father or mother. What is being taught? What is being taught is is how to hear God's voice. If there hasn't been a, a, a teaching on something that I thought was a way to hear God's voice, I'm going to lay that down and just focus on the ways I've learned that have been taught of how to hear God's voice. I'm going to focus there. I'm going to focus there. And it doesn't mean that you throw it away completely. Maybe in the future there will be a teaching in God's timing when he wants his teaching to be released concerning something. Maybe it's about dreams. Maybe it's about visions. Um, and that will maybe that will come later. And then I can focus there. But now it'll be even more accurate or maybe I'll find my old way of hearing God's voice in dreams and visions was wrong. And this is the right way. But before, if there is not a teaching yet concerning um, something from the past, you are not supposed to be focusing on the thing from the past. Focusing, focus on what is being released. That's how you can be sure, sure this is truth. This is new wine. And also, you know, being humble is being humble as a disciple as a child of God, as a child of God planted in a church where you have a spiritual leader, it means also that you are trusting the food that you're receiving is what you need. You know, a a student doesn't go, wait, what about this subject? What about this subject? You haven't taught this subject yet. How come you haven't taught on the subject? Can you teach on the subject? I think you're missing the subject. (laughs) A, A student doesn't do that. A student just shows up to school each day and just receives what the teacher gives. (laughs) So, you know, you need to have that trust and know God is releasing what I need now. And he wants me to focus on that. He doesn't want me to be distracted with this old wine stuff, that old things from the past that could be well, old wine that hasn't been released here. God wants you to focus on what's being released now, on what has been released. Meditate on that. Get that into you. We can't learn everything at one time. So God will release little by little, and we don't need to freak out. Oh, no, but I don't know all about this aspect yet. You don't need to. God's taking you step by step. A kindergartner doesn't worry that they don't know how to do long division yet. (laughs) 
it's eventually going to be important to, to know how to do math. Very important. You need to know this in life. You need to know how to do math. You need to know how to do multiplication, addition, subtraction. But a kindergartner isn't freaking out that they don't know how to do multiplication, addition, subtraction yet. This is how it is in the kingdom. Yes, you need to have the, all of the knowledge at some point, but you don't need it all right away. You don't need it. God knows what you need right now. And if you try to fill yourself with too much, imagine trying to imagine throwing a kindergartner the teachings also of first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Here you go. Today you're going to get a kindergarten lesson. Tomorrow you're going to get a 10th grade lesson. How is that going to work? Well, this is how it is in the spiritual realm. So, you know, when when you become prideful and fill your cup and you're like, why isn't this being taught? I need to learn about this. Um, I guess I'll just keep doing the old wine way thing of this because I haven't learned it yet. That's like you being a kindergartner asking the teacher why they haven't taught the fifth grade lesson yet. And you're being distracted and not able to really receive the kindergarten lesson that you need. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, so um, this is like being like a child. The teaching that's coming, you're like, you, you have this humility this is what God wants me to receive right now. This is what I must meditate on. This has come from my teacher. I know it's from God. I need to meditate on it. Get it in me. I need to stay focused here. Stay focused. That's being humble and a child, childlike. Rather than, oh, I want to I want to do this thing from my past and I want to learn something different here and I want to jump ahead. That's thinking you know best. That's thinking you know better than your teacher, putting yourself above when you're supposed to not even be on the same level, but put yourselves below. Being prideful is also disvaluing those who God has placed above you for your good, your teachers, your, your teacher, your spiritual mother or father, disvaluing them, questioning them, acting and thinking like you know better. Why didn't you do this? I think you should have handled this thing this way. That is prideful. You are, when you're doing that, you're literally putting yourself on the same level or actually above. You need to value, value the, the wisdom, the leading of your teacher, of your leader. Have respect and know your place. And so in your heart, if you don't understand um, the, wh why your leader did something a certain way, handled something a certain way, you're, you're not supposed to, to, to think, oh, I think they should have done this, they should have done that. You're supposed to humble yourself and be like, I, that this must be the wisdom God led them to do it in. And I don't need to fully understand, but I trust. Amen. Amen. And like, for example, I'll just give an example of what I mean. Like in this new wine, this revival that we're in, you know, um, just the way that God is leading. I remember in the beginning when the revival first broke out, um, shortly after that, I was traveling every week, every week ministering in different places. And um, we would have just Sunday services and we still have Sunday services and other churches, they have midweek services, they have Bible studies, they have um, a bunch of different like activities and everything. And a lot of people would wonder, well, do we have these? Do we have these? But what God was leading is that this new wine is very precious and we can't be mixing it with the old wine. So we cannot prematurely raise up, lead, raise up leaders before the time is right, before it's ripe where they're still having old wine in them. It takes some time to get the old wine out. So it's actually really dangerous to be mixing the old wine when God is laying the foundation. He's building his church. He's taking out all the old wine. And so this looks like a slower process. A skyscraper takes longer to build um, than a smaller building. It takes 
uh, takes a deeper, bigger foundation. It takes longer to build. And so that's uh, an analogy, a metaphor of, of this end time revival, of the ministries in this end time revival, of fivefold church, the church I pastor. This is a great metaphor where it, it, the, the building of the church is looking different than other churches. It's like a skyscraper. So it's important that time is, time is really taken, um, that we don't rush things or else we end, we end up with a janky foundation where things can really, really go wrong later and things can really crumble. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'd have opinions of people would sometimes give opinions like you shouldn't travel so much, you know, you should, um, I don't know, be doing more at, at home in LA, for example, but, um, Things like that is what I mean, is when God is leading the leader through every little scenario, every little scenario that's happening, you need to have that respect and humility. I trust that my leader knows best is being led by the Lord. And for me to think I know better is actually being prideful. Sometimes we don't need to fully understand everything. That's humility too. I don't understand, but I humble myself. Um, to know, to trust God, to trust my leader. Amen. Hallelujah. Right now, I want to declare over all of you, I know God is going to move in power over all of you right now and bring healing to those who need healing, to bring freedom for those who need freedom, to do whatever miracle you need. It's so important you understand that God doesn't want you to stay bound. And when his power is available, when his power is moving through a vessel, it's time now to receive. You don't need to wait for an appointment, a one-on-one -on -one prayer. It's very important to come in person, but it's not like you have to wait to come in person to receive a miracle. I mean, it's important in God's timing when you're able to, to come to the church in person, to come to events like, for example, for me, when I minister at events, it's so important to, to make a sacrifice, to travel if you have to, and get there when you're able to. When God has provided the provision and you're able to, it's so important you get there and you can expect God to do more than ever, more than ever, because there's something so special and powerful about being there in person, of the way God's power moves when you come under that shadow in person. But at the same time, God's power can't be limited, and he can do any kind of miracle right now through the screen. We have seen, I have seen, we have seen countless testimonies. I mean, probably thousands and thousands of testimonies over the past few years, ever since revival, the revival broke out, of people receiving healing, deliverance, all kinds of miracles as they were watching, at, God moved through the screen. Even sometimes, I'm just thinking right now of this one testimony of a woman. Uh, her husband wasn't as really passionate about um, uh, about the move of God. And um, he was in so much pain in another room, sleeping. And she was on live, just like this right now. And she she wrote in the comments, just believing for healing for her, her husband was in excruciating pain, and I declared healing. I declared healing on the live. And in that moment, God touched him in his room, and he was like, what just happened? And he literally had an encounter with God, and he was healed. He was completely healed. And they both came at a Revival's Now event to testify of it. And now he's on fire for God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Um this is just one testimony I'm sharing right now. So um, right now, lift your faith to receive the miracle. If you need a miracle in your life right now, and open your hearts now to receive what God has for you. If you don't need a specific miracle that you know of, God still wants to release more to you right now, more of his spirit. So lift your, lift your faith, open your heart, empty yourself. Allow God to fill your cup, fill you right now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, first of all, I seek God freeing people of pride. 
um, this is something that you have to really make the intention to to reject. There are certain kinds of um, strongholds of the enemy that need to be broken, such as pride. But at the same time, you have to understand that you need to day by day reject the devil because it's like a stronghold many times can also seep into your heart, seep into your identity. Like, a, I mean, a stronghold of the mind of um, pride, for example. So um, there, there actually absolutely can be a stronghold of pride that the devil is, that the devil is brought and that God is going to free you of today. But when it comes to pride and other areas in the mind, mental illnesses, for example, um, it's different from like addiction, for example, or even suicidal thoughts. Many times, um, when a person receives freedom, like the person just has no appetite for the thing they're addicted to anymore or suicidal thoughts. There's not a thought that comes again about suicide ever again. So, uh, so, so, so a lot of deliverance, that's how it is. As soon as the yoke is destroyed, it's this complete disappearance of, of the enemy's attack in that area. But then there's some areas, especially some kinds of oppression, like when mental illness and, um, and pride where the bondage has also like seeped into your heart and your mind. So you need to renew your mind so that the stronghold can be broken. So the devil ha doesn't have such a hold to keep you in this place, keep you in this place of, of mental illness, keep you in this place of pride. He can't do that anymore, but you have to take action in the spirit, constantly rejecting the lies and declaring the truth that's how your mind is renewed and your heart changes and becomes more like Jesus. So it's so important you understand that because I'm going to declare over all of you and God's going to free many of you from, from pride, also mental illness, but you have to have this spiritual awareness and knowledge I'm giving you right now that you have to play a part in this. You have to, your, your, your mind has to be renewed and your heart has to be transformed before you see any kind of, uh, I mean, all completely all kinds of thoughts of mental illness or thoughts of pride dissipate, leave. It's coming. It's coming where you don't even have a pride thought anymore. It's coming where you don't have any kind of mental illness thought again. But you have to take action and be diligent every day. That's how the transformation comes. Amen. So if you have dealt with pride, if, if, you know, this word I know is speaking to many of you, you've, you've dealt with it, you've acted in it, you've kept it in your heart, you've stewed on it in your mind, it's time to change. It's time to be free and it's time to change. It's time to become a humble child of God right now. So right now, renounce this pride. And for those of you that have lived in this pride, acted in this pride, renounce specific things that you have done that you know has been prideful. Renounce these specific things one by one. The actions, the motivations in your heart of why you did something, of why you spoke something, renounce them individually right now. And speak to God and say, Lord, I don't want to be this way anymore. I don't want to act on these thoughts and feelings of pride anymore. And I don't want these thoughts and feelings of pride anymore. I want to be completely humble. I want you to have all the glory. I never want to point people to myself again. I never want to operate in selfish ambition So just speak these things to God right now. Thank you, Jesus. I detach you from all that you have renounced. I detach you from all of this pride now in Jesus' name. And I declare 
this stronghold, this way the enemy has hunted you, just constantly giving you prideful thoughts and, and emotions, selfish ambition thoughts. I declare this must leave you now in Jesus' name. I declare right now that these thoughts and feelings of pride would cease. They would dissipate now in Jesus' name. And I declare from now that you would have awareness, spiritual eyesight more than ever, more than ever to see when you're being prideful, to, to recognize it, to recognize, oh, this thought, this feeling is pride. It's not truth. It's not from God. This is pride. Let this wisdom come now. Let your eyes open up now. Let every time that you are to have, if you were to have a prideful, selfish ambition thought, that you would be grossed out by it. Not grossed out in yourself. Grossed out at like, this thought cannot be here. It's not allowed to be here. Get out of here, you criminal devil. <laughs> You're not allowed to be here. That you would have that disdain, this distaste. Because the thing with pride is that when people are living in pride, they like it. They see no problem with it. They see no issue with it. They just lose, lose, um, they lose, um, morals in this area, conscience, conscience. They, they start to lose it. The more you act on pride, the more you are blinded. Like the more you lose conscience, the more you see how wrong it is. So I declare from now that this would be restored to you, conscience, the morals, the knowing, oh, this is, this is wrong, that, that that would come in you in Jesus' name. The devil can no longer fool you, blind you in Jesus' name. So from now, may you be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit convicting you this is prideful, this thought, this action, this feeling is prideful. So you can reject it and every day walk in humility in Jesus' name. I release this anointing upon you that this wisdom would grow in you, that, this, that humility would be imparted to you, that a passion to have humility, this passion to always please God and always give God the glory, that that passion would grow in you in Jesus' name.